Hello everyone, uh, this is Silk. We are here with Operation Thunderball Japan. It is turn 8.4 and we have a, just a few house cleaning things to kind of discuss and, and work through and then we'll go ahead and get into Japan's turn. Uh, first quickly, uh, we did get the uh, income rolls nicely have been updated for, for everybody as they accumulated theirs. Uh, Bruce, when he got his uh, Income roll, however, you forgot to do his tech rolls. He had them all laid out and then didn't actually execute them in his video. So I'm going to update you all on that. Uh, Bruce did try for uh, the four technologies that we see here, advanced mechanized factories, uh, fighters, and rockets. Unfortunately, uh, PBE was very unkind to him, and he did not succeed on any of them. Uh, I think a five was like his highest number. It was a little rough for the, for the Soviets there. Uh, he does have one more role coming in the future. Uh, he'll be trying for, I believe, improved logistics with his MR Pact role on the on the U.S. turn. So maybe the Soviets will, will hit that one. Uh, a couple other minor little things here. Um, there is one uh, piece that I, I think we may need a correction on. Uh, there was a, a battle here in East Poland where where some armor had rolled across East Poland, and then uh, there was the armor, this armor in particular. Uh, that it rolled across into southern uh, Belarusia at the time. And, um, however, this this battle here in East Poland, the battle took a little too long to do a blitz. Uh, in order to blitz, the battle needs to be resolved within two turns or less. And this was the battle last turn on, on turn seven there. So this uh, light armor was actually stuck in East Poland. It was not able to blitz into uh, southern Lebelski here to, to help out in that fight. Um, the other armor was fine. This one came rolling through. They won the fight. It ended with it went into Lithuania, um, but this armor here in East Poland did did get stuck there. So while this army from Lithuania absolutely, I believe, is in northern Belarus, uh, this armor from East Poland I think is going to need to be somewhere else. It can't quite get to North Prussia uh, because of the rail gauge change. It can't rail up there. It can move to southern Belarus, which is kind of my guess as to where uh, Bruce wants it. But uh, if it, it also could be in Kiev, it could be in eastern Ukraine. Uh, there's just quite a few, quite a few options. So just if you get a chance, Bruce, so look that over and let us know where you'd like that to be. Uh, the one other tidbit I wanted to kind of focus in on is this this hot spot down here in Iran. So the Soviets have declared war on Iran, which they're they're able to do due to their their sphere of influence there. Um, and so long as they maintain where they are, uh, they will not risk any further. Uh, repercussions from from their actions here from the allies um the united kingdom does have a two ipp bonus for all three uh locations of iran that's what these little union jack flags are being either neutral or under uh commonwealth control or actually i think it's british control so i mean commonwealth control um so that has been turned off due to the the actions of, of the of the soviets here However, the brave Iranians here do have now the option of, of fighting the, the Soviets. Uh, any, any power that is eligible to lend lease to them may do so. Uh, that could include the Commonwealth powers. That can include Germany. That can include Italy. Um, I'm not allowed to as Japan because of our uh, non-aggression pact. I'm not allowed to lend lease to any nation that, that the Soviets are or with. Uh, the Soviets are not allowed, allowed, allowed to lend the least any nation that, that Japan is at war with. So while Japan cannot interfere in this particular uh, conflict, all of the other players, I believe, can. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that, that uh, Iran is open for business and eligible for lend lease if anyone wishes to, to send units there. On Hambone's turn, he will have the option of moving uh, these units here, although the militia stuff, but the, the two infantry could, could and any additional units that end up arriving in the future. Uh, can be moved. In addition, Iran will get a recruitment role on Hambone's turn. It will only be at a one because they only have one territory. Uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see how that how that goes and whether the Soviets decide they want to expand further south or, or not. Uh, if the Soviets do expand south and take southern Iran, uh, the key change is that that will, so long as they own a territory, any territory that is more than one space away from their home country, uh, they are eligible for a declaration of war. From the allies basically at any time other than the americans i shouldn't say any of the allies but specifically the commonwealth and then the, the the free french kind of piggybacking onto that so just wanted to kind of clear that up for folks trying to kind of follow along 
Uh, if anybody has any questions, just post them and we'll, we'll kind of discuss it as we go. But I believe that is all of the housekeeping that I could think of. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get on get on with our turn here. Forge Pan, we do have three technology roles. Uh, we are going to be working on the same three we had last time. We will be trying improved construction, heavy armor, large ship construction. Uh, we're definitely trying to stay ahead of the United States, specifically on these two, uh, improved construction and, and large ship construction. Uh, fortunately for us, we do get improved construction completed, but that is the only one. We failed on both heavy armor and large ship. Uh, neither one was, was close, and this is definitely was my big fear here with my earlier tech program. I'm now two for six on the post uh, turn seven and later tech rolls, and I'm really hoping to get a, a tech finished here. It's it's gonna be gonna be hard to do. So we're we're hoping. Um, let's see. I asked for purchases. Uh, the U.S. did change my purchase a bit. Um, one of the things I kind of want to just chat about real quick with everybody is just how and why. You know, to, to accomplish your thing, your your strategies and, and what to do. And one of the strategies that the Japan wants to have is absolutely to take the Dutch East Indies, which are these wonderful. Sometimes they're called the Money Islands. Down here, they are two, three, four, five, six. This is a two, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine IPP down here. Uh, Japan actually gets an additional two for each of these two islands. Um, that. that Encourages them to take it at least while they're at war with the with the major power, and so they're kind of a key part of of the map to conquer. However, doing so gives the United States plus two D twelve income, and I was kind of unsure if I was going to attack them this turn or not. Sort of depends on the circumstances, but Global War enthusiast rolled a ten on his very first die, and that took the United States from sixteen to twenty six, and one of the big break points for the United States is thirty five. Thirty five, they get to start moving ships around the map. I'd really like to not let him ha have ships yet. I kind of want to keep all of his ships here and, and on the Atlantic side kind of frozen for, I'm hoping, one more turn. So we will not be going to war uh, with the Dutch, and I'm not going to finish my carrier. But both both things. Uh, Japan finishing a carrier, or actually any uh, capital ship, gives the United States plus one IPP to their to their income. And so I'm going to try to delay that, and hopefully he rolls low enough that he doesn't get to move his ships on this turn. So let's get to our purchasing phase. Just kind of want to explain why we're doing what we're doing. So since we're not finishing our, our fleet carrier, we're going to lay down a light carrier instead. So that is four IPP for Japan. I am somewhat hopeful if I can get improved construction next turn. I'll have three, three boats that might be eligible for a... Uh, reduction in cost so that's four uh, this tank here is six so that gets us to ten for the medium armor and then I've got seven which is uh, between an infantry and an artillery so I have three infantry and three artillery so that's 21 so four plus six is ten plus 21 is 31 plus eight for two Marines is 39 and 39 was our IPP from last turn and since we're not going to war 39 is going to be our IPP for this turn as we will continue to milk that last one dollar of the u.s oil money so getting from there we just kind of go into our non-combat moves i'm going to grab myself a task marker yes we're going to be building another army here in siam so i kind of want to have a Task marker to help with that. So we'll be built placing an army in Siam. That army is currently one militia, two artillery, and two infantry. However, I expect it's going to get a little bit bigger as this turn goes on here. So let's go ahead and start with the two destroyers in P41. This is pretty easy. They're going to grab two of the Marines out of Quang Tung, the, the fighting 41st there. They're going to drop down to P, is it 50, 50, 50 even. Drop down to P50 and drop those two Marines into Siam.
Here we go. Now I'm going to replace my mic. I do not know why this stealth is being so difficult for me with OBS, but it really, really is. So my apologies on that one. I had moved the two destroyers. We've got a few more things to move around here. The uh, two destroyers here that are up in P-15 are going to grab the two Marines out of Honshu. They're going to just drop down to P-32 and then down to P-41. And they will drop those two Marines off in Quang Tung. I then have two transports in P-32. Uh, those two transports will go to P-15. They will pick up the two artillery and two infantry that are there. Uh, we're going to move the two artillery and two infantry out of Hunan into Quang Tung. From P-15, those two transports will come back down to P-32, drop off the two infantry and the two artillery and two command. I then have a transport in P-15 that will come down to P-41. It will pick up one infantry and one artillery that were in Quang Tung. It will then move down to P-50. They will drop that infantry and artillery. Into Siam. And then my last two transports that were in P-50 will move to P-41. They will grab two infantry and two artillery. Return to P-50 and drop those in Siam. Our destroyer. Uh, the two light cruisers from P-50 are going to go to P-32. The carrier fleet that is in P-32, which is both carriers and the two torpedo boat destroyers, actually will, yeah, will still come down, are going to come down to P-50 to help keep an eye on things. The submarines will move from P-50 to P-59. At least the three coastal subs, I should say, or the three regular subs, my apologies. Uh, the Boom Boom Fleet 6 will stay where it is. I do have one spot on a carrier, so we're going to go ahead and grab one of the tactical bombers out of Quang Tung and land it on one of the, the fleet carrier that is in p41 so that's just a single one spot jaunt and that i believe is all of my moves oh, i'm gonna do a quick tally here uh, one two three four five so i have five so inside siam i have two marines five infantry five artillery in quang tung i have Eight infantry, nine, sorry, I have nine infantry, 12 marines, a light armor, and six artillery. I am, do have one other move. We're going to rail, or, uh, sorry, move the, the cavalry into Rihi. And... That should be all we can go to place units. Should be pretty easy. We put the, the medium armor goes in Rihi. The three artillery will go in Kaiushu along with two infantry. One infantry and two marines will go and haunt you. And that is everything for us. Uh, so that is Japan 
8.4, we'll be sending you over to the Commonwealth for uh, 8.5. Everybody else, have a good day. And if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat and we'll, we'll take it from there.